Is your health thriving or is it merely surviving? Welcome to Thriving with Chiropractic, where we unpack conditions and lifestyle challenges in order for you to be the best version of health you can possibly be. I'm your host, Dr. Mosier, and my beautiful co-host is my wife, Ellen. Join us on this journey to thrive. Hey folks, Dr. Mosier here, and I have an awesome guest, Dr. Dan Sullivan. He is well-known in the chiropractic profession, and he has seen thousands and thousands of patients across the world. And he is a neuro communication expert. He is so passionate about the brain, but he is also considered himself a introvert. So his home base is really in at home with his family, his three daughters and his wife in Nashville, Tennessee. He is an awesome, awesome guy. I am so excited about this. Dr. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, buddy. It's uh, such a great honor to be here and uh, welcome everybody for, for tuning in. Awesome. So our big thing here in the, on the show and, and in the office is your story matters. So Dr. Dan, I have to know, what is your story? What is your chiropractic story? Well, first of all, um, I love that topic because story is the key to all communication. If you look at, um, you know, who I, you know, ascribe and, and uh, subscribe to the greatest leader and person to walk this planet was Jesus. And, I, and if you look at the two things he used was parables, stories and questions, that's how he communicated. And so I, I'm, I love the neuroscience only because I, uh, you know, I kind of, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm wired to, to ask the question, why? Why do things work? All that to say, um, facts tell, stories sell. You want to like, you know, you, we all want it. We want people to know we're wired. We, we were taught stories. We were told stories as, as young kids. So um, all that to say, I love the co the topic. And I'll keep my story quick. Listen, I grew up in a um, great home. Uh, I'm the fifth of eight children. So I've got my introvertedness from being a shy, introverted, stay under the radar uh, kind of upbringing. And, um, I was born in the medical model. So forth, most people would, would understand that's more of the conventional medical care. So my mom was a nurse, been a nurse. She actually just retired. She was a nurse for 38 years. My sister is an occupational therapist. My two oldest brothers are medical doctors and I want to be like them. And, um, so I always kind of go over this because I didn't get one, just one set of tubes and mirrors. I had two set of tubes. I had my tonsils taken out at nine. Um, siblings had Crohn's disease and some kind of nasty conditions. And, and we were just part of the medical model, you know, so like we didn't know any different. I didn't grow up going to chiropractors. I didn't grow up going to natural health or taking supplements, none of that. Right. So we just did what, and I just want to point that out because I'm just like you. I'm, but then what happened was when I say just like you, that's the, the kind of the common culture. Mm -hmm. And so I would have thought the way I look at life and health and, raising kids and family now is a little bit odd, weird, and, you know, unscientific if you'd asked me this 25 years ago. Uh, but um, 16 years old, I got injured pole vaulting in high school as a track, a track and field event, got injured, went to doctor after doctor after doctor, started with my, you know, the, the trainer, then it was my, then it was a physical therapist, then it was my GP, general physician, then it was um, an orthopedist, on to specialists, you know, neurosurgeon and everybody said, there's nothing you can do. And I know this is the story of a lot of, you know, people that see you and a lot of people that should see, you know, as as chiropractors and they, you know, it's, you know, uh, I had a mentor one time that said, my practice should be the last reason we should call it last resort chiropractic because it's usually the last resort. And one it's the last resort because they get their last after all the other practitioners, but it's also the last resort because it works. And that, that was my case. So, um, my mom, we had gone to this, this neurosurgeon. He took my mom outside of the, the room and said, we don't want to say this in front of him, but we think your son's faking it because there's no test that would indicate that why he's having the symptoms he's having. And so my mom got mad. She came in, we left. And we, that was a research hospital. We drove two hours back home and we were at kind of like wit's end. And then, um, you know, as fate would have it or as God would have it, you know, a day later, um, my siblings had a, um, Dennis point one of my younger sisters did and and our dentist said you should try a chiropractor we didn't know what that meant but we were willing to do anything so we go make an appointment and kind of the rest is history but the, the important part of the story though is so he got me better 
Um, I remember my mom recently told me this probably five years ago. She says, Dan, do you remember what you said when you left that the office the first time? I said, I have no idea, mom. What did I say? She said, we got to the parking lot and you looked at me and you said, mom, why didn't you bring me here first? And my mom's response to that is ironically how I've spent the last, you know, 17 years of my life. And her response was, I didn't know. And I can say that unfortunately in our world, most people just don't know. Right. And it's why we get so passionate about what we do because they don't know. They've been told that drugs and surgery, that's the only solution. Like this is go to doctors and they'll do tests. And this, you know, they, we've got these big hospitals and these big research centers and this big technology and the big windows. And it's like, we've been led to believe that they've got all the answers and there's a time and a place, but, but God put a, an amazing healing power in our body. And that's not some sort of extreme reality or some sort of weird scientific philosophy. This is that two cells came together, and made a body and it's pre-programmed for health. And this may be the first time you hear this is your body is pre-programmed for health. And I'm going to tell you right now that when somebody told me, but it wasn't until actually, so my, when I was 16, I, he got me better. I got me playing, playing sports again, which was my identity when I thought, you know, there's no, I would never be able to do it again. Played college, uh, played sports. I played sports in college, so I was able to go do that. And I knew that I wanted to be a chiropractor, but I really still thought it was just about helping people, helping athletes get back on the field and being out of pain. I get to chiropractic college, and I, I had a guy named Dave Majors. He's a guy in our profession that that taught me things that I'd never heard before in this one evening session that he was teaching the public. And I was like, wow, I don't, I can't believe that. So. I call my sister on the way home from this night because he was talking about how the body heals and how the spine and the nervous system, how this all works together. Now, mind you, I, I had knew I was pre chiropractic I had studied biology, studied, you know, pre-med pre-medicine in, in undergrad. And I go there and I'm like, wow, I can't believe I've heard this before. And I call my sister on the way home. I had just got a, my first uh, his first uh, cell phones back in 2001. It was a StarTac flip phone. I called my sister on my way home. I had my little Honda Prelude I was driving in. And and uh, I said, Abby, you have to hear what this is all about. I can't believe what I've the path in this career I'm going to be in. It's amazing. And she listened like a good little sister. And what happened in just, just, just prior to that, my dad had recently had a heart attack. And um, I told her, I said, I believe, in fact, when I'm learning the connection between the spine and the nervous system and, and, and the organs and health, I believe that dad's back had something to do with the heart attack because, you know, dad, he would, you know, my dad was a hard labor worker, blue collar, would just work hard until the back pain came and then he would be on the, um, you know, go on the couch. He would never, you know, just rub dirt on, you know, go to doctors. It was like just, you know, take, take a few over the counters, spend a weekend on the, on the couch and then go back at it. And so I just knew my dad's back. There's no way it can be very good. And then I also knew, okay, his heart and all those things. And so Abby listened like a good little sister. She listened to me and said, okay, that's awesome that you're learning there. And then within a few days, my entire family had found out that Dan thinks that dad's back had something to do with his, you know, his heart. And at that point, Dan in their eyes had left the reservation. You know, he is gone. He is out there. He is now, you know, kind of drinking the Kool-Aid. So for me, it caused me in my neuroscience background to really dive into the research. And if I look back, the reality of why I get so fired up about the science and the research of, of chiropractic and communication and anything is because I'm consistently trying to prove my worth to my family. If I really dive deep, like I've, I've set on this trajectory of like, I wanted to make sure that what I've chosen as a profession, not only is true, right, and good, but that there's so much more to it. And my word is actually what I believe and what I think is actually true. And so I have been on this path spoken all over the world from to, to, to help explain the neuroscientific relationship between your health and your spine and chiropractic. So I know that was a longer form than you probably wanted. No, to. no, that is absolutely perfect. Uh, we relate in a lot of ways. Uh, many of the audience know this, but my mom is a nurse uh, and she's recently retired as well. So we can relate on that. Uh, on my graduation day, when she finally was coming around to the idea of chiropractic, she said, now, when you first told me you want to be a chiropractor, I would have rather you been a male stripper. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think I would have done well. I mean, you know, I, but hey, <laughs> well, you know, I've heard a lot of things. So that's the first I've ever heard that one. Wow, that's good. I mean, true that's true story. Thing. True story. Um, now, I, I tell you, if this thing had like a heart rate monitor. Um, it would have gone off as soon as you said the part where 
that medical doctor said you were just faking it. That just irates me. And I want to kind of deviate just a little bit because the big reason, um, because I've started listening to your your YouTube channel and, and it is awesome stuff. But the big thing that you said once on the show was what makes you mad? What makes you cry? And what problem do you solve? And that has I've been mulling over that. And, and one of the biggest things that I see when I have patients come in and they're like, yeah, I was just brushed off by the medical community. They said, oh, you're going to have to deal with this for the rest of your life. Or, or um, they just think I'm a drug seeker because I got tattoos, you know. And so that that really bothers me. So, um, yeah, if there's a heart rate monitor on this, I, I would would have set it off when, when you said they brushed you off and said it was just in your head. Yeah, man, I, 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 um, this is not to judge, right? It's like, um, my two of brothers are MDs. And so I, uh, I wanted to be just like them when I was growing up, they were great sports. They were great athletes. They were you know, great grades, set the tone for, you know, our family and, you know, homecoming Kings, like everything. Right. And it's good. And to this day, like they're amazing humans, um, but they're doing what they're taught and what they're taught is by definition, not directly, not intentionally, they don't, they don't sit down day one. It's like, well, the body is weak and defective and bound to break down and it's going to need some sort of, you know, outside help in the form of, you know, chemical patented drugs or surgeries and organs pulled out. Like that's not how, that's not what they're taught, but what they're taught is everything is what's wrong with the body and what's wrong with the body. Then we have to intervene And our philosophy as most probably known. You've probably alluded to this and, and eloquently talked about this. Like our philosophy is we just start from a different perspective. And the different perspective is instead of looking at everything that's wrong with the body, we look at what's right with the body. And so you may have right now, you may have five check marks when it comes to symptoms and conditions. You may have migraines and hormone problems and your hair loss and your metabolism out of control and your pain down your leg and your, you know, tension between your shoulders. But I'm going to tell you right now, even if you had 10 check marks and on 16 drugs, there's more going on with your body that's perfect, that's going great, that you can still put food in your body and your body digest it. It's amazing to think about that. I remember studying cadavers in my second year or my first year, right? In Cairo College, we just broke down cadavers, every part of the body, you just break down to its lowest common denominator. And you start to look at this thing and you're like, and I remember we go home at night, I'm like, wow, I'm going to eat tonight. And just don't think about this, but like, it's going to turn this food into clay. Some of it's going to go through waste and some of it's going to be, you know, through the bloodstream. And then that's going to turn into these nutrients. It's going to actually turn into cells. I don't care who tells you, we don't have the science to truly understand how it works. I'll just be the, like anybody that leads you, leads you to believe otherwise is fooling you, right? Or just telling you a partial truth. And it's not that they're not smart. It's just that we know that God created an amazing it, you know, in his image, this thing that we will fully never understand. So what we do as chiropractors, we just say, okay, first off, we recognize that this philosophy, our philosophy recognizes that, and that's far superior than anything that we're ever going to think about creating and, or, you know, trying to mimic or manipulate. What we're going to do is we're going to seek to remove interference. And one of the greatest assaults on the, on the, on the body's function comes through the spine. And most people don't know that, but that's where that, when that spine's not aligned and it's not moving appropriately, that there's an assault on the nervous system. There's an interference in the nervous system. And I can prove it through the brain and all the channels and the neurology. I'm not going to bore you with that. But I would tell you this is it would be important for you to know then that when you get an adjustment, that it literally improves every aspect of human performance. Why? Because it's directly attached to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is actually directly attached to your hormone production, which is directly going to influence your blood-borne chemicals or your chemistry. And, and in order to wake up in the morning, you have to make a chemical. In order to go to sleep, you have to make a chemical. In order to smile, you have to, so like everything is based on chemistry. Well, your nervous system drives that. And this is why people can get adjusted. And all of a sudden, one person's blood pressure goes up. <laughs> Another person gets adjusted, their blood pressure goes down. Like, it's because the body is normalizing. We remove interference. So we start from that place that we recognize the body is powerful. The body knows more than we do. And it made itself made from two cells into 80 trillion in nine and a half months. We're going to actually honor that power more than anything else. We're going to honor that intelligence. So then the best thing that we can do for somebody is to remove interference. And it turns out through the science that removing interference through the nervous system is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Back to your main question there, Doc, which was, he, you know, when he told that to my mom, my mom knew enough to be like, I know my son, don't, don't, 
you don't tell me you know my son. Like he's not faking it. Believe me, if you would have saw him six months ago, like this is not how we roll here. That's not how he rolls. And so that was one thing that turned her off. But the other thing was I just he was operating from his own. He didn't have any sort of testing that validated why I was in pain. And according to his standard of care, he was right. See, but that's why some of you have been told I can't be helped. Like you can't be helped. Well, guess what? That's who we help. Those that can't be helped. Not because we have all the answers, but we look at things differently. And so then we get different results. And so I would just ask you, and I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Doc, but this is the question I want everybody on this line and, and that is hearing this to ask themselves. Like I had a mentor one time that said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I want you to, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, when you change the way you look at health, the, 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 the your health actually can change. And it's got to start from this place is in my body, powerful, strong, and, and able and capable to overcome the conditions and, and challenges that are ahead or the symptoms that I've dealt with, or is it weak and defective? Because guess right, Henry Ford said, whether you think you're right or wrong, you're right. And so we literally, as Kairos, our job is to lead people to realize, first off, you have more going on that's great than that's not great, or even as bad as it can be right now, there's still things that are perfect. We're going to focus on that perfection and the intelligence that did that and remove interference so it can do that even more. So anyway, you can tell I get a little bit fired up about, about Cairo, but more importantly about, you know, this philosophy of health and, and more doctors having a, an ability to understand this DNA of hope, right? That we know that God puts in the body and that DNA of hope is like when you grab a little bit of it, it's going to take you exactly where you want to go. Absolutely. And, and you, you bring up such a really good point because how you think can determine your health in a big way. Uh, I know you are extremely passionate about the brain. So I kind of want to know, um, you know, like a, a most memorable patient success story and how the chiropractic can drastically affect anxiety, depression, those things. So a story that comes to mind actually, uh, this is one of the first, this, uh, I could list off, you know, hundreds uh, as you can, but this one comes to mind. The reason why this comes to mind is one of the first times that I really watched, I literally witnessed that which I'd only heard about prior. So what happened is little, there was a, two, uh, 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 a, a boy named Cole. He had come in, he was 11 years old and he was a twin. I remember I saw him on a, on a Saturday afternoon. I just opened my practice. It was like, six months into practice and uh, maybe not even um and he uh he'd come in his twin brother Kalen was kicking a soccer ball and so they were twins 11 years old and saturday basically his mom his dad came in and basically laid his kind of like lifeless body you know he was still there and with it and can answer questions but you could just and his son his brother Kalen, had just they just had a soccer game well he didn't play but his son he was like I know that, okay, something's wrong here because he would rather be playing soccer. You know, it's 11, he's 11 years old. He's a, and um, so then she had, and she was an art teacher. His mom was an art teacher and she had had like the entire list of everything they've been through over the last two months. And it was a ringer, like doctor after doctor after doctor, exactly what they said, exactly the test they did. And like had every test, every test known to man. And, um, the last again once that was essentially 11 years old failure to thrive and they just i mean he was on so many meds and so many things and and he just and so i go and take the history and just say well, what happened she was well the only thing i can think about is that you know and this was um during just after like the um just after the, the uh um uh, snowfall or the the winter in in nebraska is my first practice in lincoln nebraska and um she said he Cole uh, went down and fell down, um, was sliding down at the end of a hill, and he got to the end of it, and he like literally, you know, went upside down and nailed his head. He come in, and I could tell that day like he wasn't himself. And then like that night and that weekend, he started had some stomach stuff and some head stuff. And I could tell like if I had a track record, that's when it kind of all started. And it was just this cascade that got worse, but it wasn't like overnight it was gradually got worse and he had stomach problems and he wouldn't eat and he started losing weight and he said headache and he complained of this stuff so just go to doctor doctor and so you're thinking about like okay that was a physical problem right a physical stress led to something right that changed and 
all the tests, every single test, negative, 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 like every test, but they just kept filling them full of drugs and drugs and drugs. I just remember there's this whole thing. I still have it, like all the things that he would do. And it started adjusting like, you know, here's the thing, Lynette, I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what we do. We don't look to heal. I don't look to cure. I don't look to treat. I look to remove interference. And we did evaluation. And his, you know, his occiput, the top bone, his skull was, you know, flexed on this atlas bone. That atlas bone is the most important area. It's got the most neurology. And it's going to affect the body. It's, it's you know, hitting this top bone. It's like hitting control, delete on, the, on, on your computer, right? It like resets. And so we know that when that bone's out of alignment, that bone is a major piece of all body function, including the autonomic system, which is organ, organ control. So we start start adjusting, put them on a care plan, start adjusting three days a week. Boom, 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 boom. And it wasn't overnight. It was boom, boom, boom. About a month into care, you could just start to see he just started to come back and started to come back and started to come back and started to come back. And I saw this kid literally go again from death's door within 12 weeks. He was perfectly normal. And then, you know, Lynette started Rod, her, his dad started, and then Kaylin, his twin brother started. And I took x-rays and, and did an evaluation of Kaylin and who had no symptoms, but still had, and it turns out there was some birth trauma involved. They both had this, but it was just so, so interesting to see two twin boys, right? Same genes, eight from the same table. One got sick, one did. What was the difference? Right. Yes. And, and, and we've had, you know, D.D. Palmer said this, the founder of chiropractic, like, what is the difference? They said, the and it, it turns out Again, how we live our lives. We have these stressors that we come with. All of us are different. And this is why we just obviously encourage everybody as a chiropractor. Like if you want to maximize your health, like it. So, I mean, that was one. It was just so fun because I was able to watch him go from that. And then, you know, within 12 weeks, he's playing soccer and, and back to his the game. And, and you just think about 11 years old. Now that was whatever, 15 years ago and seven, 17 years ago. And, um, you know, just think what, what could have been, like, where would he have been? And a lot of people sitting out there right now, I mean, you may be thinking a friend, a relative, a family member, a sister, a brother, or somebody in your Bible study, and you're like, yeah, you know, their health has declined. They've been on this trajectory. And it's like, what I want to remind you of, what Doc would want to remind you of is that it doesn't have to be like that, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to feel bad to feel better, right? And, and what I mean by that is it doesn't require a pain. My three siblings who had Crohn's disease, which kind of got me into this as well, they had no neck pain, back pain, or anything to do with musculoskeletal. I mean, their shoulders, arms, legs, but like no, no. But they had a curve in their neck that had been reduced, that had put pressure on the spinal cord and the nervous system, and it was shutting down parts of their digestive tract that they never got evaluated because we didn't know. My mom didn't know. We didn't. We didn't know, right? And so that's the part where I just want to encourage everybody to make sure they are, um, you know, pun intended, you know, be getting aligned. And uh, mm -hmm. I can't do that without without a good chiropractor. So yeah, I'll kind of turn it back over to you, and then I can go into the other question, Doc, about anxiety as well. More. Yeah, yeah, that was absolutely awesome. Um, you totally changed that that young man's life for sure. And it also thinking about twins. Um, this is kind of deviating what you were talking about, but you have one twin or one sibling really successful that grew up in a broken home. And then the other one ended up repeating the, the vicious cycle of, of the broken home, or you, you see in that scenario, scenario play out. Um, anxiety and depression is a major issue in our world. And, and so I want to ask you more of like, can someone rewire their brain, rewire their thinking pattern and overcome anxiety and depression and a follow-up question with that is how can chiropractic help with that mm -hmm. i mean the answer is yes i mean this has been proven in every level of science and it's called neuroplasticity and that simply means that the brain is plastic right like they use that term because if you think of plastic, it can be molded with well, your brain and you don't mold tissue. You don't change tissue. There's just synapses. And I want to get into the depths of it, but basically there's these, these, it's like when you learn a new language or any sort of new trait, like you have these new synapses that grow. I always, always, you know, kind of make note of this, that my daughter, um, you know, even when she was three, she's now five, I've got three daughters, but the youngest one, we, we played memory match since she's been three and she would always beat me at memory match. And for a while I thought she was cheating and I thought she like knew the car, you know, like somehow she just knew the things on the car, the back of the cars that I didn't know. And we started playing. It's like over and over and over again, she would beat me. And what was more fascinating is like, she would be able to know early on in the game when you don't, you know, there's still a lot of cards on the, on the, on the table there. Like you, 
he, he, you know, like ran that she would like, boom, boom, you know, get it. You know, they remember memory match, pick one over, you got to match it and find what where it's at. And then all of a sudden one day it hit me. I'm like, Oh, this is why is because, you know, like a child, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, they can learn languages like that. They're, they're, so, so the way God designed us is that our synapses are, are these areas are growing. We have to our synapses growing together more quickly because we need to learn younger, right? It's, it's also why things happen to us younger. We, they make more impact on our, on our entire life because we're, we're, using, we're, we're creating so many more synapses. And so the reason why that's important, I bring up my daughter beat me at memory match, is because those synapses we we also create throughout life it's just they become less and less throughout life but you still can so that's the point is first off to change that right people that deal with anxiety and depression we have to first recognize it is possible to change right that's a first thing second thing is your perspective is everything right i can show two people the same thing and one goes into a deep depression and the other one goes in and succeeds and builds the life of their dreams why because their perspective of that changed like i took my girls um, uh, to, to a third world country, Haiti, this was probably three years ago on a mission trip. And I did that for one to, to help down there and, and be part of that, uh, mission that we were part of. But the other one was to show them like that I always have a perspective that as bad as you think things are in your, you know, kind of soft culture that we live in today, they're not as bad as you think. I wanted to paint that picture and we still do that perspective. So it gives us perspective. So my point is you're living a life right now that somebody else would dream about. I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. You are living a life right now that somebody else would dream of having. And when you when you get up in the morning, you start to think about those things, right? People call that, I call it perspective. Some people call it meditation, right? It's like gratitudes, right? Gr- gr- be grateful. I, I call it perspective. I, I think that it's hard to not be grateful when you, when you share a certain perspective of a reality, right? It's easy to go into another culture and see what they don't have, and then you immediately realize what you have. It's perspective. So instead of just gratitude, perspective. Think about, right? what you think about you have discernment for and you you eventually recognize how to create it and so um so so that's your the, the number one is having a certain certain perspective number two and, and actually you alluded to it um doc which was was um you know that there's an image you guys maybe maybe you haven't seen it but you know the image is this is um there's two brothers sitting at a bus stop um, and one of them is in a suit, kind of successful business person. The other one is clearly homeless and strung out and, you know, smoking a cigarette and looking for, you know, alcohol money. And, uh, someone comes up to them and says, finds out their brothers and, uh, and then asks them each individually, how did you get here? And the guy who homeless said, my dad's an alcoholic. Hmm. The other guy looked at the other guy. So how did you get here? And he said, my dad's an alcoholic. And so the irony there is they each saw the same thing, but the response was different. They rose, they were, you know, brought up in the same home with the same person, but their response was different. So as much as bad things happen, right? Like we're not saying that it's a, a response and we get to choice, choose there. I'm not saying it's easy. So the perspective that it can change. Number two is your perspective. Um, you know, number three is, you know, it says to overcome anxiety, like number three is, is really, you know, what you put in your body, right? And these aren't in any sort of order, but like, there's clear evidence to show that you full of processed foods and sugar and bad fats that your literally brain and the way it's wired is not going to have the nutrients to be able to overcome some of the challenges and your perspective is and you're going to be, it's just just harder, you know, and, and, and so that so be very aware of the chemistry in your bloodstream through what you're choosing to, 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 to feel it with. And then the fourth thing is where chiropractic comes in is movement, moving our bodies, right? We've been in a good exercise and you, you know, get done. You're like, man, you've got this. You didn't want to do it when you got it, when you're going into the gym. And it's like, you got done. I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I did that. I feel re-energized and revitalized a new perspective. Um, same thing they have with the shower because the shower works on the, 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 uh, the neurology uniquely. It hits, you know, this, we have these little receptors and there's neurons that when, when like water hits it, it does put a new perspective. It causes this proprioceptive input in the brain. And so that's why also chiropractic is so powerful. And we have people that have come off depression medications and get out of the anxieties and kids that are getting their attention back and, you know, focus control and getting out their ADHD. How does that happen? It's because of the connection, the intimate connection between the brain and the, the spine and the, and the central nervous system, right? The brain, central nervous system and the spine. And, and when the spine is not moving or aligned appropriately, 
unfortunately, it's this cascade. And one of them is this, this emotional, mental um, connection that happens. Funny enough, you know, when you look at some of the research on this, the cerebellum, which is the part of the brain, kind of the back part of the brain, it's, it's more towards like your posture and uh, equilibrium and your balance. It's one that people lose who drink a lot. Like if you dr- if somebody that drinks mm-hmm. a lot, you'll lose your balance and control if you drink too much, right? It's act- because it affects the cerebellum. Here's what's crazy is research that just came out, well, this was 10 years ago, but it, it literally showed a direct link from that cerebellum to the emotional centers of our, of our brain, meaning the, the drivers, the emotional drivers are mental health. And so it turns out that your posture and your ergonomics, meaning your posture, the way your body sits in space and the way it moves has a direct link to your emotional health. We know that, but it's cool to see in the evidence that proves that. And this is why every adjustment actually helps me. I get people, you know, you get people all the time, like you start crying on the table or laughing on the table, that emotional response. It's because of that connection. So powerful. So like, it's just so amazing. Like you're out there, truly and you're not like getting you know chiropractic care you, you just need to I, I i every every week when i get adjusted i'm like i just can't believe there's people that don't get this they just don't get this opportunity and it's not about how you feel it's just a how it's almost i always call it like an internal shower you know you know how a good shower feels if you've been a long day in the heat or sweating or working mm-hmm. in the yard or something it's like wow that feels so good and it's like i'm just saying the and i got evidence to prove it from a science that this is so good so i just encourage somebody out there like like it's there for you, for you. And, and uh, obviously get under the care of, of great doctors that like, like Dr. Chris here. So. Awesome. That it was absolutely amazing. I got so much out of it. I, I'm thinking um, of so many patients that come into our doors. Um, you know, I have a lady who couldn't even go to our local Walmart. That's our big store here in Salem. Uh, couldn't go to our local Walmart because of social anxiety was so bad that she would just have a panic attack. And now after probably two or three weeks of care, she is going to Walmart. She is filling her gas. She's, she's living life. And, and, you know, me and Dr. Dan could tell stories all day long, but it, this is, there's actual science to what we're doing. And Dr. Dan, I am so, so appreciative of you taking the time with us today uh, to explain and dive into some of the depth of what actually happens when your spine is aligned and how you can actually thrive with chiropractic. Yeah, man, let let me, if it's okay, I'll just leave everybody with this. And that is, um, you know, BJ Palmer said this, right. That that our, our infamous uh, and very, you know, fearless leader uh, in chiropractic uh, who, who was known as the developer of chiropractic, you know, so from early 1900s, uh, I think he passed away in, um, in in late 60s, and he said this famous quote. This is so powerful. It, it is very good when you just even it comes up to me even more and more, which is you never know how far reaching something you say, think, or do today can affect the lives of millions tomorrow. And I want to, so you may be a patient, you know, listening to this and you've been in a chiropractic for a long time. Maybe not, maybe you just started, or, or maybe you haven't yet, right? Um, I just want to let you know, like something you can say to something to, to, to even live that out, right. To, to something you can do, think or say can affect the lives of millions. You think about your sphere of influence. One of the things we know in this world right now, obviously that there's not, there's not a lot of hope, you know, and, and, and I would say there's not a lot, there's just unfortunately more negative and, and, you know, chaos than, 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 you know, hope and order. And, but, but, you know, my belief here under Dr. Chris, like, you know, we serve a God that's bigger than that. And, and, um, mm-hmm. there's this, that, that, that the creator put in us an amazing intelligence and there's, um, amazing vehicle, right? A, a chiropractic is nothing more than a vehicle that is allowing our health to be maximized, just like an exercise or a dentist would do, or like, you know, good nutrition. But I want to remind you, if you, you've been under care, like, like telling others, right. And to, to tell others and to be that that potential vessel that can give somebody their health. Cause it has this question, right? Is in it, then there's a, uh, a monk once said this, and I don't know who exactly said this, but they said, we all have goals and ambitions in life, thousands of them, right? Like things that we want to accomplish and we want to do things we want to achieve people we want to help. Right. And when we're healthy, we have thousands of them, but when we're sick, we have one, right. And that's to overcome that sickness overcome that condition, overcome it because our focus is that. Why? Because health is 
the single thing that we live this life through, this this vessel that we have to live through. So so it's like, I, I we love to be on the side of things where we're not selling you know widgets or vacuum cleaners or TVs. Not that those things are bad, but I'm just saying like we get to be on the side of it. Like the most important asset you have is not a home, a vacation spot, you know, a timeshare, a boat, a car. Greatest asset you have is your health. And you've been gifted an opportunity to make decisions and a free will to actually decide how this goes down. On folks in our culture, it's like, hey, just wait till it gets sick or wait till it breaks down and then do something. And we're saying, no, that's not it. Take care of this thing. You know, be able to to, to be proactive on it and uh, you will reap what you sow. And so, um, Doc, I just, you know, again, appreciate you allowing me to share my heart here a little bit, but also, um, you know, the impact that you're making with this uh, with this media, with this with this platform and, and the people that you're you're serving. Well, thank you. There is um, everybody's story matters and and we're just trying to share shared stories. And I think this is a great platform to do that. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me, Dr. Dan, and thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Thriving with Chiropractic. Thank you for joining. We truly hope Thriving with Chiropractic is making a positive impact on your health and wellness. Please comment and share this episode. We would love to hear from you. And as always, remember, your story.